Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to World of Warcraft Legion. Now, we are here in the Hole of Shadows. And we're going to talk to uh, Sanguinar and let her know that we finally have the item from the Maw of Souls. Took us long enough. Went ahead and ran with a group off camera Let's and talk. picked up the item that I had missed. The legend was true. I was right about my suspicions. I had heard about Ravencrest almost perfect espionage team during the War of the Ancients. Now we know how they got their information. The others will not believe it when we tell them. Of course, we could keep it to ourselves. Valera considers it for a weighty moment. No, that's how the foolish and greedy lose their heads. We will speak the risk around to, or we will spread the risk around to everyone. It is imperative that we decipher the SI7 letter. We must uncover the secrets that it holds before it's too late, but our best codebreakers have yet to make a dent in the cipher. However, we now know that the myth is in fact reality. The Raven's Eye truly exists. Shall we tell the others? Listen to Valera's tale of the Raven's Eye. Aldiel Shalom. Is it story time? There is a myth, a fable, that is whispered of in dark corners and back alleys. It is of a jewel so powerful that no one believes it exists. But I assure you, it does. Surely everyone here has at one time or another heard the tale of the Raven's Eye? The legend is that the gem conveys the power to read any language, follow any map, and most importantly, to decipher any code. A merry yarn! But that's all she'd be. The Raven's Eye don't exist. It never did. It'd just be some old wives' tale to scare little rogues who are wanting to keep their secrets hidden. Exactly right. We are talking about the end of secrets. Well, other people's secrets anyway. But more to the point, the Raven's Eye will give us the means to unlock the secrets hidden in the SI-7 letter. And we know where it is. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. My loyalties are my own. Now, what do you say you and I go to Valshara and recover the most powerful jewel in existence? The Raven Court of Black Rook Hole is where we begin our search. It is the ancestral home of Lord Curtalos Ravencrest, Nidelvan hero of the War of the Ancients. Some of my own ancient ancestors are interred in its cemetery. Meet me there and make sure that you are not followed. SI7 is very good at what they do. We have to be better. Meet up with Valera Sanguinar at Ravencourt in Valshara. I will see you at Ravencourt. Make certain that you are not followed. And we'll certainly give it a shot. But that is actually not what we're planning on doing this episode, guys. I wanted to show you something that I believe was added in this newest patch, 7.1. Specifically for Outlaw Rogues, my friend uh, Falil let me know about it, and I think it's very interesting because we can get a transmog set that apparently only Outlaw Rogues can procure. I hope you like my little male blood elf mask. That looks creepy. But um, I am going to head to the location, and I'm going to show you guys, so if you have any Outlaw Rogues, you can go ahead and do this too. So it requires me going to Westfall in um, Azeroth, deep in Alliance territory. I'll see you guys there. So, we are here in Westfall, which is essentially the Alliance version of the Barrens. And we are heading toward the Dead Mines, guys, which is um, a, a very Alliance-centric dungeon, which is the base of the Defias Pirates, which we, uh, we've dealt with Vanessa Van Cleef, who is the current leader. But it looks like we're going to have to cut through uh, some of her ranks and recruits in order to get this transmog. So here's the Defias hideout. And I believe the pathway, it's been a while. Now these are, <laughs> these are level 14. I believe you can get this transmog set as soon as you can get the grappling hook. I'm not sure what level that is. I think it's in the 30s. But um, the grappling hook is essential to actually getting this, uh, getting this transmog. And I am going to get lost here, I can already tell. Ah. Fortunately, there is a map. So the Defias Pirates, from what I'm seeing here, they have a network of tunnels, and they're mining stuff, gathering resources, so they can basically be more of a pain 
in the side of the Alliance. I'm not exactly sure as to what the Deadmine story is, but I know the Defias Pirates are more of a... They're not... They are pirates, but they've kind of evolved into more of a... Uh, I guess, ter not a group of terrorists, but a sedition group. I guess you could call them terrorists. But here's the entrance to the dead mines. And let's go ahead and head in here. Now, your first instinct, especially when you're playing a high level character, is to kill everything um, in the room that you can with AoE attacks and all kinds of stuff. Not actually the case here. So what we do is we go ahead and stealth just because I don't want to kill anyone. It completely goes against all kinds of... Uh, now those are NPCs if you want to take quests and whatnot here. But what you'll want to do... There's also another item that you're going to need in order to do the, get this transmog, and that is a red... red-winged macaw, I think? They're, they drop from the pirates here um, in the dungeon. So you're going to have to grab one of those first. I think it's a green... Oh! They found me. Fortunately, we got Vanish. It's a green-tipped macaw. I believe it is. Now, unfortunately, the bosses we are going to have to kill, so... Yoink. And this ogre mage is about to blow up. Like so. And buzzer blade. Actually, that's a transmog that I don't have. Nice and simple dagger. Let's go back into stealth here. We need to head toward the cove, which is near the Hello Nurse, um, which is near the end of the dungeon. And then we're going to have to work our way back. You'll see why I don't want to have anyone killed here in just one second. Or at least kill as few people as possible. You guys discovered me. That's unfortunate. Now we're in the mast room. Can we actually open... And we can't sap the boss. Oh, no. We've got to kill him. Yoink. There we go. And Cruel Barb. Oh, look at that Cutlass. We're getting all kinds of nice weaponry today for the Transmog Collection. But I think there were a lot of people who were complaining that there just... There wasn't enough... There weren't enough Transmogs if you wanted to go piratey, which, of course, Outlaw Rogue is focused on. So I think the developers gave this, like, hidden way of getting... It's not the best transmog in the world, in my opinion, for pirates. I, I think I've got one of the best. Oh, that mask is haunting. Let's go ahead and take that off with the skull and crossbones. Because all of the best pirate gear, like piratey armor in terms of like the big white puffy shirts and pirate boots and whatnot, those are all, that's all cloth armor. So don't really get a choice in the matter, unfortunately. Now, I think I have to kill all these guys. These are Defias Reapers. These are essentially uh, farm machines that have been... Look at that. I'm hitting for like two and a half million. 1.2. 2.4. Once we kill all this farm equipment, this guy should wake up. And this is the Faux Reaper 5000. He was actually one of the um, world bosses during the Legion invasion before the uh, expansion actually hit. Systems By your command. And, ooh, another sword. Buzzsaw, holy crap. All the cutlasses, all the gears. Now, these guys, it's very important that we don't kill them, because you notice those red bandanas they're wearing? That is actually key, because if I, I believe what we need to hunt down after we get this quest is anyone who's wearing a red bandana. we got a large battered chest there. Now, we use the Defias Cannon to make a... open the door. And, oh, crap. Well, that happened. They disappeared, though. Good. They reset. 
Now, we're here in Ironclad Cove. And what we are looking for is a spectral parrot. Somewhere around here. Ah, I see a spectral parrot. Ghostly parrot. Level 1 non-combat pet. So this is pretty much the end of the dungeon. That's one. That's the Ephias' gunship there. Now, the ghostly parrot isn't going to talk to anyone. And you can see there's a skeleton here that's been shanked. So what you do is you go into your appearances for your pet journal. And... I think mine is named Bonnie. After Anne Bonnie, who was a famous pirate. Green, ring, green Wing Macaw. So we go ahead and summon. And it gives us an option for a grappling hook. So we hit that. Bam. And here's a super secret area, guys, that only outlaw rogues can go to. Captain Bramblebeard. Oh, that is an awesome coat. Where can I get that coat? See, all this cool stuff, we don't get. All the NPCs, they get all the good stuff. Yar, finally. I've been stuck up here for years with not company but me own thoughts. Tis good to clap me eyes on another swashbuckling soul. Are you up for a plot of revenge and skullduggery? These meddling defias thugs murdered me and me crew years ago before they took over this cave. I propose a series of counter-murders to bring about balance. Bring me proof you dealt with enough of thieves to clog a bilge pump. Collect 100 bloody Defias bandanas for Captain Bramblebeard, and we get the ensemble of blackened Defias armor. Have a good one. So, let's see, let's check out the drop rate here. And it's, oh wow. Oh, we can actually get bandanas from the parrots? Awesome. Now check this out, we're gonna go all swash buckle buckle. Allegedly. I need you. Woo! Haha! -ha. Well, that's awesome. I didn't know that parrots actually, uh, carried bandanas, but we are going to shoot all the things here, guys, because obviously we need a hundred, so this is going to take a bit, but do the humans drop? Nope. Looks like one bandana apiece. So I have got a lot of murdering to do here, guys, so I will do all of that off camera here with Bonnie at my side, and I'll see you guys when I'm done. So we're almost halfway done, guys, but I wanted to show you this. I have killed everything in this room, and this ship was littered with uh, Defias pirates and the parrots. Killing everything in this room has netted me 41 bloody Defias bandanas, so it's imperative that if you're trying to do this by yourself, that you try your best not to kill anything on your way to this room other than what you absolutely need to. But we are continuing... Oh, wow. Hello, friends. Thank you. I would like all the things that you have. But just letting you know, like, killing everything up here is just going to put you in a bad spot, so uh, the stealthy way is best. So, we got the uh, bandanas that we need, and pretty much everything in the uh, dead mines is very much dead now. But I decided to spare the lovely mine bunny. <laughs> bartenders or uh, bar serving ladies there's two of them and it seems like they seem to be completely unfazed that all their clientele is dead but hopefully I'll see them in Booty Bay soon but let's get back to the captain and let him know the job's done and up we go vengeance has been wrought good captain Can I help you? revenge is worth waiting for not that I have much in the way of choice <laughs> I hope those rotten thugs rot in whatever pit of misery spawned them. Ensemble blackened defias armor. Yoink. So, let's go ahead and use on said ensemble. Blackened defias armor, leggings, gloves, boots, and belt have been added. So, I'm going to go ahead and port to Dalaran, and we'll go ahead and give these a viewing. So let's see what exactly we can do here. We will look up Blackened. And I'll check that out. We got a lot of nice little buckles and whatnot. It has kind of a, a sickly green tinge to the black. And what else was there? Was there any shoulders? 
No, it just looks like a base armor set. Um, Black and Defias gloves. Black and Defias belts. Leggings. See, this looks more like a ninja's bodysuit. You know what I mean? I actually think it would look good if you had a t if we had a tabard. I don't have a tabard equipped in the slot though. But if we had a sufficient ninja style mask, if your character was more ninja than pirate, if so, why are you watching this? <laughs> but um, if you're more of the ninja inclined, this would actually be a really good costume. Uh, something a little bit more sickly green. Mm, I don't really seem to have anything, but you guys kind of get the gist. So if you want a nice rogue style um, bodysuit, I don't think you can get much better than the classic Defias. And like I said, only outlaw rogues can get it. Let's go ahead and yoink. I think we're going to keep uh, Swindle Gear's current look because that still looks good. But... Um, the cool thing is that transmog is now available for all of your characters too, by the way. So if you have any leather work wearers, I think it's just straight leather, um, you should be in good shape to be able to wear it. So that's pretty cool. And now you know how to get to it. Like I said, um, yeah, I think you can only do that quest if you have access to the chain, which I believe is around, let's see, what talent? At level 30. At level 30, you get the grappling hook. So that's when you can go into the dead mines. Be careful, though, because sometimes low-level elites can surprise you. Um, especially when you're being overconfident. But, yeah. There you go. That's pretty That's pretty gnarly. So, um, in terms of our business for the rest of the episode, I guess we will uh, head back to Valshara. So as Swindle takes his uh, polluting... Uh, turbocharged flying machine into the forest of Alshara. We need to determine what exactly we're going to do here, guys. We still have two more druids we have to uh, track down. But I actually think what we need to do... You see, here's the world quest that we can do here at Valshara. Um, first thing we need to do is we need to go to resupplying the line. Deliver the crate of ammunition to Fargo, Flintlock, and Valshara. Um, Fargo has been waiting on this delivery for quite some time. I think ever since Swindle was in... Asuna. So, let's go ahead and head this way. We're trying to, I'm skipping the world quest text there. There's a bunch of squirrels and acorns um, in the druid town, and you have to try and capture the squirrels and crack the nuts, and that's your world quest. For characters who have taken on Arthas, the, the, you know, the, the Lich King himself, and Illidan Storm Rage and Deathwing. I was like, so what are you doing in this expansion? Oh, catching squirrels and cracking acorns. How the mighty have fallen. Okay, Fargo, don't be mad at me. Well, you're a dwarf, I don't care if you're mad at me. Last talk, more shooting! Oh, hey, this is exactly what we needed. I was about to start flinging wee animals. Good to see you again, lad. These elves need all the help we can give them. All charged up and in my sights. If you're gonna wander into these woods, you'll be wanting something with some punch. These plants are a mighty grabby. Or a might grabby. I've got me special explosive charges here that should send those fertilizer mutations back to the dirt. Take them with you and give them the viney beasties a what for. Use Flintlock's gunpowder charges to kill 15 shimmering oleanders. Indeed, once again, I apologize for my horrible Scottish accent. I used up all my bullets on the wee invention of mine. I call it the deployable bullet dispenser. Oh, aye. It shoots in there indiscriminately without all that messy and time-consuming aiming or thinking that us people folk are wont to do. We had deployed quite a few of them Easter here when this swarm of plants came a thrashing through the trees. I didn't have time to go back and tell them the turrets. Would you mind getting them back for me? Or at least what's left of them? Recover ten deployable bullet dispenser parts around Moonrest. And... Deployable bullet dispenser. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> you have my attention. And that's over there. Now, I do know for a fact there is a quest chain that takes us this direction. So, um, yeah, you know what? We'll go ahead and, and do that before we go hunting for the rest of the druids. They were chosen by Mar Malfurion. and they should be fine. Now, as you can see here in Moonrest, the... Um, disposition of the trees has changed somewhat in a very negative way. 
and we'll find out more about that later as we continue the storyline. We're kind of jumping ahead here, but this is for engineering. Holy crap, that is a nice looking gun. I want it. They appear to be entangled with vines and scratched by their thorns. Don't see any terrible beasties nearby. That'll probably change change though. See, it looks like the the trees are bleeding. Or they have like spider webs and vines made out of congealed blood. Something you'd see straight out of a hammer horror film. Or uh what was the name of that movie with uh Crimson Peak, which was a very stylized kind of gothic noir horror movie, old ghost story. I think that it kind of, that's what it reminds me of. Just those that really bright red. I guess that you would see like in the decapitation scenes in uh, um, Sleepy Hollow, which is one of my favorite Tim Burton films. Love it. I love it when the blood is um, over exaggerated like that. Now, here are the shimmering oleanders. We need... <laughs> we need to explode them. Oh, like so. Holy crap, that's a one-hit kill. Can I have more of these? That is stellar. Loose! Throw those ba -bombs. At least the dwarf was understanding that uh, we took our time to get to him. Just need a few more bullets, and then we can just focus on pruning the plants here. I wonder what it would be like to actually fight them. But if we have weapons that'll insta-kill, I don't really see the point of it. I think we do have to come back here eventually, so we may have to see what these shimmering oleanders can actually do in a straight fight. Or these creeping death blossoms. That seem very squishy. Okay, no worries then. Can we sap them? Of course, they, they're plants. We can't sap them. They sap us. <laughs> Being plants and all. Almost done here. Man, this was quite an instrument of warfare for having to pick up this many bullet dispensers. This thing had a lot of guns on it. Must have been something out of Warhammer. Whoa! Don't need to get up that close there, Swindle. Almost done. Well, actually, no. We got nine more of these guys to find. Fortunately, the area looks pretty saturated. I think other people are out here doing the quest as well. Boom. Now, a little bit of spoilers, we'll, we'll find this out in the storyline, but we're essentially in an area of the forest that has been taken over, or at least heavily influenced, by the Nightmare, which is essentially the antithesis of the Emerald Dream. It seems that every single one of these realms has, if there's a heaven, there's definitely a hell equivalent. The interesting thing I'm I'm looking forward to is when we get to the Illidan storyline eventually here. I've done it multiple times on my on my other my main characters that I actually play more than 30 minutes a day. But um, it's one of those interesting stories that kind of explains why a villain thinks or someone who is seen as a villain may not necessarily be or at least misunderstood. And those to me are the best villains. Villains that are just Forces of nature. Ah, artifact power. I will take that. Force, uh, forces of nature villains can be fun, but you really have to give something to expand their dimension, otherwise they are very, very boring. That's one of the reasons, I don't know if I've talked about it in this series, I don't like the zombie genre at all, for the most part, because I... That's just a more fantasized version of the man versus nature um, genre to me. I don't really consider it horror. And um, I just find a lot of zombie stuff to be boring. I, I, I watched the first two seasons of Walking Dead, and then I finally kind of phased out, and I'm going back into it now that Negan's there. Now that there's a really good villain that can sit there and eat up scenery. And if you read anything about Negan's story, he thinks he's the good guy too. That's that's very important in a villain. And we find out a lot about Illidan. And um, honestly, I'd like to talk to you guys when we get to that point about the Lord of the Burning Legion himself, Sargeras, and the stuff that he encountered before he became the Dark Titan that wanted to wipe out all life. 
Um, there's definitely some interesting, um, what's it, interesting comparisons there. Now, where is our guy? Here he is. Now, where do we go from here? Do we have something following us? Yes, we do. We have a very angry tree. Are you going to make it? Nope. He gave up the chase. Out with it. Quite the weed killer, eh? <laughs> I figured you'll be wanting more of them charges, so I went ahead and wrote down that schematic for you. I figure it's always good to keep them plants and trees in line when they get all uppity. Ooh, we can learn how to make the gunpowder charge. Huzzah. Those mean greenies better not have touched me dispensers. Oh, me poor innocent bullet dispensers. Look at what they done to you. Well, at least they went down shooting. That's how I like to go. Here's a schematic for them. Deploy them near something you don't like. Deployable bullet dispenser. So we can... Ooh. Let us... Let's see. Um, Deployable bullet dispenser. Lay stone. Heck yeah. And we can buy these in Dalaran. Summons a turret to assist you in battle. Oh, that is right up Swindle Gear's alley. What about the gunpowder charges? Oversized blasting caps, which you can buy in Dalaran too. Ho oh, ho! We just got a lot more combat capable, guys. Outstanding. Thanks to the power of science! But, um, good stuff. Nice that we're using technology to save the forest. <laughs> Wish more people thought like that. But, I think we will go ahead and end the episode here, guys. I hope you've enjoyed my little walkthrough on how to get the Defia set for your Outlaw Rogue. And, um, we will continue our adventures in Valshara next time. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, that'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.